This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho, there's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And this birthday boy is a icon throwing one of the most weird pitches you will see baseball history. He is a knuckler. Not a whole lot of people pitch with a knuckleball. And all that. But there have been some famous knuckleballers like Wilbur Wood, Charlie Hutt, R.A. Dickey, Hoyt Wilhelm. There's got to be a few other knucklers. Phil Necro? Yeah. But this guy says them all. Oh, it's Tim Wakefield. He started his career with the, pe uh, the Penguins, my butt, the Pittsburgh Pirates, but he played 17 years with the Boston Red Sox from 95 to 2012. And he was the oldest to play in the majors when he retired. Well, today he's 55 years old. So he's actually third on the Red Sox in victories by a pitcher behind Cy Young and Roger Clemens, which is hard to believe. He's third. He's second in all time wins at Fenway Park of 97, behind Roger Clemens with his century mark, and first all time in innings pitched by a Red Sox pitcher. So, yeah, he was okay. He was drafted as a second baseman by the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's funny. After a scout told him that he would never get above double-A as a position player, Wakefield actually turned to pitching and decided to do his knuckleball. And he seemed to be pretty good. He started in triple-A in 92, and then Pittsburgh called him up. He registered six complete games. Well, by, by the time the trade deadline passed, he went to the majors. He threw a complete game against the Cardinals, striking out 10 batters. Wakefield was a boost. He was 8-1 in 13 starts with a 2.15 ERA. He won the Sporting News Nationally Rookie Pitcher of the Year. After winning the NL East, the Pirates would have to take on the Braves in the NLCS. Wakefield actually won two starts against Tom Glavin, pitching in Game 3 and 6. Sadly, though, it wasn't enough as the Pirates lost in Game 7 to the Braves on Sid Slid. All that. Wakefield was actually close to being an LCS MVP, but the Braves did their job. Wakefield would unfortunately struggle. He would walk nine batters in a start twice and 10 in another start. So basically he had issues. The Pirates would release Wakefield April 1995. Six days later, the Pirates said, uh, the Old Sox said, sure, let's do it. He worked with the Necros, Phil and Joe, to use the knuckleballer as an out pitch. I think that's basically their, their main pitch. Wakefield did okay. All that. Wakefield was very dependable. He began the season with a 1.65 ERA and a 14-1 record. Really? Hmm. He ended the year 16-8, and eight, getting the Red Sox into the AL East Division title. He actually finished third in Cy Young voting. That's pretty good. Over the next three seasons, Wakefield would win 15, 45, 15 per year, or 45 in total. Wakefield was made to be the new closer in 99 when Boston's main guy, Tom Gordon, was injured. He actually made 15 saves before Derek Lowe became the new closer and Wakefield went back to starting rotation. Wakefield became a permanent starter by 2002. Now, he would always be reliever, then starter, then reliever, and starter again. Ironically, Derek Lowe was the closer, but Derek Lowe also was the guy who won Game 4 of the World Series in 2004 against the Cardinals. Wakefield did fantastic, allowing only four runs over 14 innings in the ALCS against the Yankees. Unfortunately, he gave up that home run Aaron Boone in the 11th inning that got the Yankees to the World Series. 
Wakefield did apologize to the fans after the game. Wakefield was supposed to pitch game four, start game four of the LCS against the Yankees in 04, but because he went out of the bullpen, he couldn't start. Derek Lowe did, and all that. Wakefield decided to pitch out of the bullpen. But he did win the World Series trophy, obviously, for 2004. Wakefield decided to agree to a rolling contract extension, which meant the Red Sox had the ability to keep Wakefield for the rest of his career. Wakefield would actually lead the Red Sox pitching staff with 16 wins in 05. Unfortunately, he didn't pitch in the 2007 World Series due to a bad shoulder. Wakefield. Wakefield in 2009 actually carried a no hitter into the eighth inning and got a complete game win. He at at 42, he was the oldest Red Sox pitcher to pitch a complete game, which was amazing. Wakefield looked pretty good through June of 2009. He was an AL All Star, becoming the second oldest first time All Star. He had never been to an All Star game, but the, he was he was the second oldest first time All Star at 42. Behind Satchel Pitcher was 45. Wakefield seemed good. Unfortunately, though, he did have a lower back strain. I kind of remember. Tim Wakefield. Guys, two had to strike out in 2010. Surpassed a couple of Roger Clemens' Red Sox records and all that. Wakefield was actually meant to be a reliever in 2011, but because of injuries to John Naki, Daisuke, Max Daka, he went into the starting rotation, all that. In May of 2011, he became the oldest player ever to appear for the Red Sox, pitcher or batter. Wakefield had a bad season. And the 2011 season will always be remembered for Boston's choke job in September that led Tampa to take care of Boston for the wild card. Although I do say that the game on Labor Day when the Red Sox lost to the Blue Jays brought a lot of problems. Anyway, he decided to retire in 2012. He was known for his philanthropy, being very charitable for a hospital for children and hosting a celebrity golf tournament. Basically, he does a lot of kids' charities and all that. He has a wife and two children. So, good for him. You know, knuckleballers sometimes get crapped on because they're throwing an outdated pitch. But you know what? Knuckleballers can have their day in the sun, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.